it's the AK Option Trader back with you again for another edition of the AK Option Trader, our Sunday video. Let's get her started. Well, I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed in this market right now. I, uh, I'm i actually kind of amazed that we really haven't had a trend. I mean, if we had any kind of trend, it's a small trend up. Um, but I really expected... You've been keeping up with me. I've really expected a lot, a lot, uh, a lot more positive move one way or the other. Uh, a lot more defined move. I should use, would be the word I'd use. A lot more definition. A lot more trend. A lot more um, just direction with this volume and a little volume increase and stuff like that. We have not had it. Instead, we are continuing what we ended the year with, with this sideways, sideways mash and move and ugh. it makes it hard to trade. Granted, last week uh, I didn't trade much at all because I was in meetings all day. In fact, I didn't even get to blog uh, one time there. But I was in meetings, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. Just just didn't have time. Two-hour commute, uh, 12 hours of meetings. So just uh, just, just a bad week for me uh, as far as trading. So I didn't get to pay attention much. I, I, you know, every break I'd peek in and see what the market was up to and, and stuff like that. So let's take a look and see. Well, right in front of us we got the VIX. <clears throat> Excuse me, we got the VIX here, and like I've been saying, <coughs> it looks like this area right here is going to be an area for us to watch. All right, um, I think this area is going to be crucial uh, coming up here for the VIX. Sorry about that, I had to pause, got a call. Um, anyway, so the VIX is this area here is what we've been looking at and seeing a lot of support here in the $16 area, um, but it hangs out in this range here and we just broke down from it. Now, if we take a closer look at it, you can see this broadening range we've been talking about and I actually just went straight through here, but if you go from here, you can see this broadening range, starting it out here, and uh, we're within this down range and we actually broke it. <clears throat> if we look closer, we actually broke the bottom of it. Uh, closed beneath it here you know we see we touched it three times and closed above it we actually broke through it a little bit here so that's something to keep an eye on uh, on the VIX so now let's go on to the Dow you can see the Dow area you can see our volume has been increasing kind of we kind of uh, stabilized here this last few days we had a little peak there we kind of stabilized so we had a nice increase but now we're kind of stabilized and to the average area nothing spectacular but it is volume I posted last week to watch these days because they matched uh, the last year's move, beginning of the year that caused that, uh, uh, or was preceded, I wouldn't say cause, preceded our, um, our downturn. <clears throat> and so keep an eye on these. I said, well, nothing happened. Look at this. Let's even get rid of this darn thing. Everything's been sideways. And if we get rid of the uh, drawings and the studies, you can see it's just been kind of eh, laddering up a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. Nothing huge, no real trend. In fact, if there is a trend, it is up. Uh, there's no denying it, but there's a lot of bottom wicks here, so we've had a lot of down moves uh, with some uh, buying into them. Put the studies back on. If you look at the NASDAQ, it looks a little bit stronger to me. Although it was trending down, we had a pretty good breakout. Almost made this look like a uh, bull flag right here. So we had a pretty good breakout uh, at the end of the week. Um, pretty strong move, but we've been oversold for a long time. We have been, uh, pardon me, overbought for a long time. We've been overbought for a long time. The 20 has touched here, and I talk, commented about that. It's the first time it touched in forever. And then it's bounced back up off here, and it actually offered support here. So we're now moving up. We've got a bullish engulfing of this uh, hangman type uh, candle and so we probably will see more move up here uh, back up to the top of this Bolger band that that's what what I would be expecting anyway if we look at the S&P it's been just pretty much white candles you know just march up five days in a row white candle white candle white candle one big day the rest of them just plodding along boom 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 so definitely there is an uptrend it is a small slow uptrend which is generally a stronger uptrend uh, so it is apparent, it is there, uh, as whiny as I am about it, and as much as I don't like it, uh, I do have to deal with it. The, the RUT Russell 2000 is kind of slowing down, it looks like to me. Uh, this thing was the strongest, and you see it broke out here. Uh, it's kind of flat and just barely moving up again, all right? So the Russell, again, showing very high, very high RSI, uh, very uh, overbought right now, but it's still hanging out there, and it can be overbought for a while. Uh, nothing really breaking out. Okay, we don't have tons of news that's probably going to move stuff on um, 
Monday. There's no news on Monday, but Thursday, I think, is going to be a big day. Uh, Thursday, we've got initial claims, and we've got retail sales on Thursday. So I'm going to keep an eye on Thursday. Monday, not so much. So now here's, uh, I'm showing the Euro, US dollar, because this is one I've been watching. I really thought this was walking off the cliff right here. What I did not anticipate was the 200 moving average coming into play. I did not think it would offer that much support, because when I look back in history, and I'll take you with me here, let's look back uh, five years, throw a daily chart up there. So we look back five years in history on that 200 moving average, and you can see it doesn't usually offer that much uh, resistance or support. Here it offered nice support for a bounce. Here it offered a little bit of support for a move down. So I thought, yeah, you know, uh, it, it just doesn't hang on it that much. It usually is a touch and go type thing. So we didn't bounce up right away. And we just kind of came back down and retested it. And I thought, oh, this thing will give away no problem. It didn't. I was wrong, uh, obviously. And we're just sliding right along it. Now, that being said, I still think this is a bear flag formation. I still think it's eventually going to break. And when it does, uh, this thing's going to crash. UUP is going to jump up. And the reason I'm showing you this, obviously, is so we could take a look at the UUP. Let's throw it back onto a one-year scale here. Uh, back in this gray area I showed you, back in this area I was talking about, I thought this area would be crucial, offer a lot of support, and it has. Um, in fact, if you throw this line here, extend it off these three, you can see we've got some support here. I'm probably going to be looking to, to play this pretty soon. We had a pretty nice volume day up. I'll probably try some calls here next week. I'll probably try some uh, uh, February, maybe even March calls. I'll have to look at them. I haven't studied them yet. It does look like it's trending down the RSI. I have to wait till I see this start to move back up. Uh, but for right now, uh, that's one I'll probably be watching really closely next week, uh, is uh, the UUP. I'm stuttering all over the place here. Hold on one second. So here we've got uh, PHM, Pulte Homes. Uh, I thought the housing market was weak, uh, but then going through, we had uh, great news come out. Uh, had You can see the big day here uh, on Thursday. Nice big move up. All the housing stocks, except for Toll Brothers, seem to go up. But uh, look what happened on Friday. We've got a spin top bearish harami type setup here on the top Bollinger Band. Saw tons of bearish haramis. I'm just going to show you a couple of them. Anyway, so watch that. Maybe for a pullback, maybe all the way down to 200 moving average. Uh, I like to see these moves where it really takes it out if it's going to grow past the 200 moving average. You like to see volume. You like to see a pop up. So Pep Boys had the same type of uh, formation, PBY sticker symbol. Um, oops, forgot to type it in there. That would help. PBY. Jump right up, same type of thing. Bear Shrums. There is a lot of them out there. There's, uh, you know, they're not the strongest of signals to me, uh, reversal signals, but they, they're worth watching. Every once in a while, one of them work out. So if you see it start trending down, you can play that um, on the uh, PHM. I'd play it to fill the gap, perhaps. Um, that's what I'd be looking for. Here's one I've been watching a lot, and it's just because it's a split. Ebex um, is a split play. It's just split. You can see 17 bucks now. <clears throat> and why I liked it is I, I like this head and shoulders here. I probably talked about it before. Shoulder, head, shoulder, breakdown, and then a rally. And now we've got almost an inverse head and shoulders. If I run a line from here to here, okay, say from here to here, I've already got the one side up. You've got yourself a, a shoulder, head, a lower right shoulder, come back up. If this holds and breaks back up, uh, we should be seeing... You know, four or five dollar move to the upside here. If this holds and drops down, we're going to see a retest down of this fifteen dollars. So I like this one. I like split plays. They they tend to move a lot, usually to the upside, uh, just because people get in and want to buy them. Uh, let's throw another one up here. Shield. This is another one I like. Uh, just gapped up, uh, gapped up strong on huge volume. Hasn't been able to hold it though. Um, so I'll be looking for this maybe to fill half the window, perhaps the whole window or the whole gap before rallying again. So I might try to short this a little bit. Risky play, but I'll be looking at it. You see how long it took here for, for it to fill. You know, you're looking at three weeks uh, for it to fill this gap, and it could take that long to do that. Once it fills that gap, I, I should have a alert on it and uh, trade it to the upside. Finally, let's just do Visa. I just like this simple trend line right here. Nice simple trend line. It's on the trend line. Looking for a bounce up again on Visa. It's been a strong stock. If it breaks, and you play it to the downside. But this is a got a gap here that it could want to fill. And it could do that down to 82.50 and then bounce back up again. So that's it for this week. Uh, most of the news is going to be Thursday. Nothing going on Monday. Got quite a bit of economic news, but most of it's Tuesday through Friday. And like I said, most on Thursday. So look for more blog posts the rest of the week. So this will be AK Option Trader signing out. Trade well and prosper. Home, but to the